Hey guys, Joe here. I've been slacking a little bit on my uh, videoing, I guess. Um, I've had some stuff going on, you know. I got away from it a little bit when I went to the shootout. Um, didn't get anything done that week because I was in Ohio, which was great. Um, I also had a little bit of trouble with my talon. It, uh, it didn't want, the head gasket just didn't want to seal. Um, bad compression and then I was losing water and I finally just pulled the head and brought it to the machine shop. Um, pretty frustrated with it. So I just wanted to work. I didn't want a video so I got that head back and uh, it was not flat. So um, my machine shop guy took care of that for me. Had a better surface on it when it was done anyway. And I've reinstalled it and everything looks pretty good at this point. So um, while I had the head off the car, I took that opportunity to do some uh, prettying up of uh, some parts. I powder coated the intake manifold, the uh, fuel rail, and the thermostat housing. Um, so that was kind of cool. I got that done and uh, it's a little improvement under the hood. Um, I also have been working on trying to get my AC up and running and um, I've had some uh, stuck old Alabama field parts that I've been dealing with. Um, so I had to remove uh, one of the tubes that goes um, to the condenser and um, I got that part right here and I have another part of it right here so um, it's pretty broken uh, so I got some new parts sent in ironically from Alabama that are in uh, good shape came loose without too much trouble and I'm gonna get that installed the problem is this is not just part of that tube this is part of my condenser so I have a new condenser on the way as well so I'm gonna have to swap that out um, so while I'm waiting on that part, uh, I decided to do my fuel feed line upgrade from where my filter resides up to the rail. So I'm going to take care of that right now. So this is the OEM stuff I removed. I wanted to make sure after cleaning out my tank and installing E85 compatible rubber lines everywhere, I ran this um, stock style filter just to make sure any garbage got caught up in this before I put my good stuff in. So uh, getting a look at this, uh, you can see the biggest restriction here is in this banjo bolt. So, uh, and you can see that the uh, orifice is not very big on this line. So, this is getting replaced with this stuff I have here. So, this needs to be cut and a hose made. It's probably going to be about that long. And then it's going to bolt to the rail. So, I got to make this hose. But what we're dealing with here at the rail, I have a 6AN adapter to the stock rail and I have this gauge port so I can get fuel pressure right at the rail and then where this line connects it comes over to here this is what's going to be on the firewall replacing what was previously there um, we have our adapter to the stock line going to a filter we have a gauge port here electronic fuel pressure sender that I'll be able to log fuel pressure with to this 90 that again goes to this hose and to the rail I think this length will be good. Quick test fit to double check. Oh, 
that right there. And we need to cut it in more here. I really hate to dirty my sink up, you know, because it's so pristine, but I do need to clean this out after cutting. I like to lube these up a little bit because I've had bad luck if I don't probably a well-known thing you're supposed to do I have this Brad Penn um, utility oil that I use um, picked it up at a PRI show and it works well and I'm running out I'm going to go ahead and tighten all these pieces together as one because then I can put this end down on the factory feed line and tighten it and I'll be able to run the hose to the other end of the fuel rail. See you next time.